Hello, this is Elise Cochran. Um, this is my screencast for module seven and eight for the blended learning training. So on module six, I talked about my first unit or my first module for unit one that I go ahead, went ahead and get got started on my Google Classroom. A couple of updates since then. Number one, I now have a final, you know, whatever that potentially means, but um, a pretty idea, good idea what my schedule is going to be for the fall. And I'm going to be teaching consumer economics all day, five periods. And three of those sections will be just gen ed and two of those sections will be co-taught. So I feel pretty good about the fact that I've started building my LMS for consumer economics. I got a good start. One of the other concerns I had with module six is that with Google Classroom, I couldn't figure out what would work in terms of quote unquote preloading content for my modules for my units. Um, and I talked a little bit to Sarah at our last face to face and we talked about some good options and it turns out, and I think this is a change from last semester when I used Google Classroom, you can actually submit things as a, you can, you know, go here and go to any of these options, you know, create assignment. And then you have the ability to whatever you're going to do. Let's just do an example. Oh, spelling. Um, and you have option. I knew you had the option of scheduling, but it also turns out you have the option to save a draft. So that's been key to um, putting content for module um, for the submission of module six and seven for my next two units um, for consumer economics. Because after you save it as a draft. Everything then pops up here. Let me actually collapse this so you can kind of have an idea. Up here is save post. So I can then go down to this drop down menu and you can see anything that you've already put there. So I could potentially be put whatever it is I can think of as I'm thinking of it or in order or what have you. And then once I do that, I can actually click on it. And it'll go to just like I was submitting it any other time. So then I still have the option then to schedule it. So maybe if it's just a week, you know, I'm a week ahead and I want to go ahead and schedule things because I know where I'm going to be, I can schedule it. Or I can go in and just assign it and it shows up on uh, to my students' Google Classroom right away. So that has been life changing <laughs> in terms of me. Uh, I was a little concerned about whether Google Classroom is something I wanted to stick with because of that option. Um, but I think we're good to go. So. Quickly, let's go ahead into the next unit or module that I um, put up. So this would be actually, if you look on my um, topics here, this would be for unit one, module two, which talks about employment, employability. So uh, this module has a, uh, a lot of content. Um, the first unit of consumer economics is large, it takes quite a few weeks to get through. So um, I just kind of start from the beginning and put things up. So for example, first one is just your basic notes with your PowerPoint. Um, I always do provide students with paper copy because they actually prefer that, but I always allow them the opportunity to do it online if they like as well. So that's the first thing that we have here. Okay. And then next is interview prep. And so what students are doing here is they are actually going to um, pick five questions from the list of 100 potential interview questions, copy and paste each of those questions to this document and give your response to each question. This is for them to kind of practice because we're gonna do mock interview as well. And then here is a link to potential interview questions. So that is there. One of the nice things too about Google Classroom, um, even though you kind of, every time you're putting something onto a new classroom or what have you, you feel like it's starting afresh. There's no like document cloud or what have you. Um, you do have the option of reusing posts, even if it's archived classes. So that's one of the things that I was very helpful when doing this as well. A lot of these things I reuse and then added um, like updated content or updated um, ways that I'm going to be presenting this information for this semester. Next, we have a document that has gathering information for your resume, and it just has a resume info sheet 
attached that students can fill out electronically um, to help build the information that they would use to actually make their resume. And then we have the actual creating your resume. So there's a resume sample there. I gave um, very detailed instructions about what I want students to do because I did want I do want them to do their resume on a Word file as opposed to a Google Doc just because um, Microsoft Word just provides better formatting issues when it comes to such a, an important document like their resume. One thing that I probably will add is a screencast of me showing them how to go in and properly edit a Word file so that they keep the same format that's on that Word file um, just to make it easier for them because I find that students really don't know how to best edit Word files and things like that um, in order to keep the formatting that's so important. Finding a job ad, I created a screencast to just show students exactly what I mean by finding a job ad. So that's there. And then this was a question where students are going to be looking at a good, uh, um, gave one suggestion about that video gave about a good application and bad job application. And so there's a little video there and they're going to be doing that. There's filling out a job application. It's quote unquote online. So this is a new document that I gave before I gave students just a PDF. And that was a lot of where I had a lot of issues with students saving it correctly and all of that. So I actually took the time finally to make that online application into a Google form. So that was um, felt good to be able to get that done and be able to use that over and over again. It's mock interview feedback form where students were going to talk to um, another student, do a mock interview, and then give each other feedback. There's um, good and bad job interview video reflection there, which actually, this they're going to delete because that is actually what that's supposed to be. There is a sending thank you email where students are going to um, there's a there's a website that kind of talks about examples of good thank you emails and then I also did a quick super quick two minute screencast video of how students access their JTHS, JTHS email because once again I find that even my seniors don't know how to access their email and then there is reading a paste of activity where it looks like I still need to attach some things but students are going to be looking at a pay stub and determining how the correct way to read it. So actually we're going to delete that. Looks like there's a, because that information is here. Okay. And then there are notes on banking that I started working on. And what I'm actually probably going to, and I stopped there and decided instead of going for my second module that I'm going to put for my for the submission of module seven and eight for blend and learning, I decided that I'm going to skip over unit two because there's still a lot of things that I wanted to work on still and go to unit three, which is on unit three module one, which is on taxes, um, because I had done some work during the training with this. So first is understanding a W-2 and filling out a 1040 EZ. And there's a, the screencast that I did for this is here, so I attached that. And then other instructions so that students can fill out a 1040 easy here on the computer. And then they also now have a practice where they're going to be doing it on their own using the W-2 as well. Next is a dirty tax scam assignment. <clears throat> and I found a video where the person lists the IRS lists the dirty dozen tax scams of 2017. Because every year the IRS creates a video um, creates and comes up with the what the latest tax scams are for that year. So students will use that. And then there's a palette that students are going to be filling out where they talk about the legal ways to avoid paying taxes, helping to understand. Because I mean, even me as a taxpayer sometimes get confused about 
what is what when it comes to that. And then this is the one that I accidentally just made. So there's that's kind of the module now. As I was putting things on, there was definitely things I was thinking about in terms of adding and changing um, as I go and actually use this within the classroom. Um, like I said, being able to save things as drafts has kind of really changed my look on how I can kind of preload my Google Classroom and all that. And I'm just really glad that I now have some things already ready to go for the semester. That's about all. Thank you.